Finding a way. Finding a way every week. Tell us what Buffalo Bill. Yeah. Yeah. No overthinking, right? Go play some ball. Go play some football. It's an exciting time to be a Buffalo Bill and a fan of the Buffalo Bills. Welcome into week number four of the Sean McDermott Show presented by Kaleida Health. Sean, thanks for being in here once again. A two-point loss to the Dolphins. You led them in every statistical category. You, you had them all over the field. Your roster was completely depleted. And yet the guys were battling, trying to win that, keeping it into a close game down late in it. What was your message to the team after a tough loss like that, but yet the effort they expended? Yeah, I think we learned or were, were confirmed with what we thought going into the game with the heart the intangibles of our football team, Steve, were, were what we thought they were. The guys really battled, uh, but we got to take care of some things, some of the some of the details and the opportunities that we had. Yeah, and started the game missing some guys, Hyde, Poyer, Dane Jackson, Ed Oliver, Jordan Phillips. And then, of course, during the game, guys were dropping like, like flies. I mean, it was... It would look bad for a while because of the heat and because of the physicality of the game. How impressed were you with the resolve and those guys in the roster who you didn't know if they were going to play at all and then ended up, it was all hands on deck. Yeah, third game of the season. You don't want to be down that far. Um, sometimes that happens over the course of the season spread out. Sure. But all in the last couple of weeks, um, you know, adversity always hits. So it's how you deal with it uh, that really determines where you go as a football team. Now, Vaughn said after the game, a loss like this could be good medicine, like it brings guys together. Do you think this loss, what is there about this loss that could galvanize the team if you if you agree with that? Well, I think, you know, early in the year in particular, you collect information about your football team. And tangibles, as, as I just alluded to, then it's, hey, where can we improve? What part of our offense, what part of our defense, special teams can we improve on in order to become a better team and, and continue to grow and, and, and win games you know, on a consistent basis? And so somewhere along the line, it's good if handled the right way. All right, so we go down to Josh. Once again, in Miami, has this monster game, 400 yards passing, 50 yards rushing, a couple of TDs. You know. Plus, you know, he's the guy who leads you. Mm. So what would you think of his game and how he handled it? Yeah, he's a warrior. Um, again, not surprised. Uh, knew it going in. He was under a lot of duress in the right. game. And uh, we asked him to do a lot, and maybe in some cases too much, to be honest with you. But he can handle it, right? I mean, he's, he's never one to turn those things down. And, he put us on his back, and, and uh, he was battling. And you know, we just came up a couple plays too short. And I think again, we've learned a lot about our football team, and now we've got to get some guys back, hopefully, and, and get on the winning track. Uh, so you have these these stats that are just lopsided: 497 yards of their 212, your 40 minutes and 40 seconds of their 19 minutes and 20, 90 offensive plays to 39. It looks like a dominant, you know, dominant performance on paper. But how do you? flip it around on the scoreboard by two points. You know, what's what's the missing ingredient there? Yeah, well, the ball, right? right. Taking care of the football. We turn the ball over inside around our five-yard line. Um, an opportunity for two field goals that didn't, one didn't get off and the other one got blocked. Mm -hmm. um, and, and then just opportunities on the defensive side as well. You know, the ball's in our hands. We got to make that play. So all things we've done before, just executing the fundamentals that win games. So Hamlin and Johnson start at safety. Elam starts at corner. Ingram comes in for Benford. Uh, and two only has to throw it 18 times. Tyreek Hill's only got two catches for 33 yards. What'd you think of what your young guys played back there? Yeah, I thought they understood the, the overall plan, Steve, more than anything. They battled, right? Down in and down out. You gave them the, the one long play on third and long, in which you know, that's that's when you want back. But overall, I thought they battled and gave us a chance. So Miami blitzed Josh a ton. And as a byproduct of that, Devin comes out with nine catches for 78 yards and a TD. You went 11 for 18 on third down. What did you learn about this new Miami staff and their defense that maybe was is different than what it's been over the last couple of years? Yeah, I thought they had a good plan. Um, the staff on defense, uh, at least, is, is similar to the staff that they've had there. Um, so, but I thought the plan overall that they had was good. Overall, we need to execute better and stay out of those third downs. To have 18 third downs is, is too many. Usually you have around 12 a game. So we've got to do a better job on first and second down. Right. Coach, thanks here. We'll be back with you later in the show to get your final thoughts on the game against the Ravens. We'll be right back. The Game Plan is presented by Energy Mark. Trust Energy Mark for renewable energy supply. Coming up, Eric Wood breaks down the tape from the Bills' loss to the Dolphins. And stay tuned to see Deion Dawkins mic'd up in Miami. 
Chopping Wood is presented by St. Bonaventure University, an official education partner of the Buffalo Bills. Welcome back to the Sean McDermott Show, and it's time now to take a look back at the tape from the Bills' tough loss in Miami with our good buddy Eric Wood. E, the Bills dominated the game on the stat sheet, but came up short in the end. What did you take away from this game? Well, the Bills came into this game with a ton of injuries and had more throughout this game, but they're not going to sit here and make excuses. Now, they did have a fairly good day on offense. They ran 90 plays. They had almost 500 yards of offense, and we'll look at some of those plays. A lot of those plays came against the Blitz, and Josh Allen, for the most part, was able to handle the Blitz well. On the defensive side of the football, we saw another good week from Greg Rousseau, who now, with one and a half sacks in this game, gets up to three and a half on the season. Yeah, let's start with the first play of the game. Josh hit Diggs for 28 yards. Walk us through this one. Josh Allen sees that the Dolphins are in a blitz look. He brings Dawson Knox across the formation, and he's going to block that added guy. Josh looks off to the right on this play, and then he comes back to the middle of the field. They have spying linebackers in the middle of the field, and Josh is able to hit Diggs over the middle for a big play on the first play of the game. That set up a fourth down touchdown where Josh found Devin Singletary wide open in the flat. How did Motor get so open? This is an aggressive fourth down call by the Bills on the road. Some teams would elect to take the points. Ken Dorsey, Sean McDermott, they decide to go for it here. And with all the blitzing, you can have two different strategies. One would be to leave more guys in the block, and then you got to win more one-on-one -on -one matchups, but you don't necessarily have to get rid of it as fast, or you can release guys. And as soon as Devin Singletary releases out of the backfield, Josh Allen knows that if the safety doesn't run with him there, he's going to be hot for an open touchdown, and he hits him in stride. Setting up the Bills' second touchdown drive, Josh connected with Isaiah McKenzie for 27 yards. They got him inside the 10. What did you see on this one? On this play, you have an adding linebacker, so not a true blitz by Miami, but they are rushing five on this play. Isaiah McKenzie is in the slot, and he's simply going to beat man-to-man -man defense with his speed. Josh Allen, unable to step into this throw because of the pressure in his face, throws an unbelievable pass off his back foot to get the Bills inside the 10-yard line. Yeah, and that nice touch pass set up a touchdown a couple of plays later as Josh connected with Isaiah again, this one from eight yards out and a touchdown. Now, this was an all-out blitz by Miami, a cover zero look. So they just had man-to-man -man across the board, and Isaiah McKenzie is going to come across the field, and Diggs runs up the field. He draws the eyes of both the Miami defenders, and McKenzie's going to run across the formation for the wide-open touchdown. Let's switch it over to the defensive side of the ball and look at Greg Rousseau, as you mentioned, had one and a half sacks on the day. His first one came on Teddy Bridgewater when Tua had to leave the game with an injury. This is a TE stunt here, and Boogie Basham is lined up as a three technique. He does a great job of drawing the guard up the field. When you have Von Miller on the field as the Bills' left defensive end, generally you're going to slide the center of the guard and the tackle to him, so you're going to get a one-on-one -on, -one on the other side. Oftentimes you'll run a stunt or a game on that side, as we call him. So Boogie Basham is going to go up the field. He's going to draw the guard. Greg Rousseau is going to immediately go up the field, get the tackle to set back, and then wrap under, and he ends up getting the sack here. Fast forward to the fourth quarter, Leslie Frazier dialed up a rare blitz and Rousseau got home with DeMar Hamlin as well. We don't see a lot of blitzes from this Bills defense, but this is a well-timed one. It should have paid off better. They, they put him in third and 22 here, but DeMar Hamlin comes um, off the right edge of the Bills defense. Greg Rousseau rushing on the other side. He's able to get the sack on this play, but DeMar Hamlin gets the half sack as well. And, and this was a timely blitz. And we saw this last year a lot from Sean McDermott and Leslie Frazier. And they waited until they got under center here and ran motion. And then they actually fire a defender off the edge to, to his backside. And he's unable to recognize the blitz. Great stuff as always. Thanks for this, Eric. We'll catch up with you next week to break down the tape from the Bills game against the Ravens. Looking forward to it, Steve. When we come back, we'll have Deion Dawkins mic'd up, and later we'll break down the next-gen stats on Sportsology. Mic'd Up is presented by GEICO. What up? What up? What up? What up? Hey, a little bit of fun in the sun. A little bit of fun in the sun. Yeah. Isaiah, what you got here, like 30? Like 30 people? 120? Yeah. What the f***? Yeah, I get like 
So, yeah, you playing for free. Oh, my. Yeah. Snowman going to go get a little layer off today. You know how it's a big bottom, medium top, and a small head? I'm going to look like the head all the way down. Head, head, head. <laughs> Let's go, DQ. Come on. You finna be skinny, skinny today. Skinny, skinny. You gonna be skinny as today. I'm good. Yeah. Let's go, Dominate on the three. One, two, three. Dominate. One, two, boom. Hey, I am mic'd up, Roger. Sappho, happy? Yes. <laughs> well, I appreciate you. Better late than never, right? Better late than never. Let's play as one. Let them fill us up front on three. One, two, three. Shotgun snap to Josh. Takes a look right. Now guns one down the middle going for Diggs. Caught out of midfield and he goes down right there. Hey, but either way, Diggs. Hey, that's Hemothy right there. The snap. Josh looks his way. Fires short left side and is caught. Touchdown, Buffalo. Caught by Devin Singletary in the end zone for the Buffalo touchdown. Hey. Whenever you catch those little, uh, the check downs, the DN is right there. Right, yeah, right, okay. He's yeah, coming to hit that ball. Yeah, but you be, but you be moving. Just do what you do. Be, be Vaughn. I'm with you. Let's rock. Hey, stay, stay in the shade. Stay in the shade. Play action again, steps up, trying to avoid pressure. He cannot, he is dumped, he is sacked. Damar Hamlin in there to make the sack with help from Greg Russo. Greg, there you go. The snap to Morstead. This kick is partially blocked high into the air. The Bills, it'll sail out the back of the end zone. It's a safety. All phases of the game, all phases. Josh takes. Looks, pressured, gets away from it, fires a short one. This one caught by Isaiah McKenzie trying to head out of bounds, and McKenzie is brought down. You got to get up and spike immediately. You got to get up and spike immediately. Five seconds, four seconds, three seconds. They're running out of time. One second. That's it. Ball game. And this one ends with a Buffalo loss. Still to come on the Sean McDermott Show, we'll take a look at the best of the Bills' next-gen stats from week three. And stay tuned to hear Coach's final thoughts on what it will take to bounce back in Baltimore. Sportsology is presented by ECMC. ECMC, bringing hope and healing to Western New York. Play action. Josh sets up deep, fire short. This one is caught by Singletary. On the run at the 40, at the 35, gets inside the 30 and finally brought down. It's first down and 10 from Miami's 47-yard line. The Bills' offense is in a 21-personnel set up against a 3-4-4 Dolphins defense. Running back Devin Singletary is aligned in the backfield with quarterback Josh Allen under center. Allen takes the snap and fakes a handoff to Singletary, who then runs an angle route. Allen checks down to Singletary, who runs left, picking up 19 positive yards before being tackled at Miami's 28-yard line. On this play, Motor traveled a total of 43.65 yards, and he topped out at a speed of 18.47 miles per hour. The expected yards after the catch were only nine, but Singletary picked up 19.5. Allen had 2.94 seconds to throw, and his pass was in the air for 0.4 seconds. This pass had a 77.2% completion probability, and it took 8.3 seconds to complete. And he gives it to Moss. 
Turns the right corner, has some room to run at the 25, 30, 35, 40. He's out of midfield, still on the run, and he's finally pushed out of bounds. Oh, what a run. Best run of the game. It's first down and 10 from Buffalo's 20-yard line. The Bills' offense is in an 11 personnel set up against a 2-4-5 Dolphins defense. Josh Allen is in the shotgun with running back Zach Moss in the backfield. The ball is snapped, and Allen hands it to Zemo, who immediately runs through the right side D-gap. Moss turns on the Jets and runs past Dolphins cornerback Nick Needham, who was only 1.85 yards away. Running down the right sideline with four Dolphins chasing him, Moss picks up 43 yards before being shoved out of bounds at Miami's 37. Moss was the fastest Bill on the play, topping out at a speed of 20.58 miles per hour. He also traveled the furthest out of any player, rushing for a total distance of 63 yards. The expected rushing yards on this play were only eight, and there was a 26.3% chance of this run resulting in a first down. With this week's Sportsology, I'm Chris Brown. Coming up next on The Sean McDermott Show, Maddie Glab and Chris Brown go inside the matchup with the Ravens. Plus, Coach gives us his final thoughts on what it will take to get back on track in Baltimore. Game Preview is presented by Independent Health. You deserve the red shirt treatment. Maddie Glab here alongside Bills insider Chris Brown with this week's game preview. And Chris, the Bills are going up against the Baltimore Ravens for a week four contest. And Lamar Jackson is so good because of what he can do on the ground. But he's definitely added to what he can do in the air this year. Right now he leads the NFL in passing touchdowns with 10, total touchdowns with 12. He has the best passer rating in the NFL, too, at 119. And the Buffalo Bills came into the Dolphins game pretty banged up, especially on defense. They yeah. leave the game even more banged up. And here they are with another tough test against an explosive offense. So going up against a quarterback like Lamar and with what the defense doesn't have, how can they make sure they're up to the test in this one? Uh, can we say get healthier? <laughs> um, the defensive interior really is, is the health that I'm most concerned about, whether it's Ed Oliver. I don't know that Jordan Phillips is going to be able to get back in time for this week's game, but at least if you can get Ed Oliver back in the fold, you kind of shore up the defensive interior because this team is – gaining steam in terms of running the football and not just with Lamar. J.K. Dobbins got back last week. He was on a pitch count. So I think they're going to try to really stay balanced as an offense, which makes them even more dangerous. And I think if you can force long down and distance by being strong up front on the early downs, you can get Lamar in a situation where you can cross him up with blitz looks or with coverage changes and if Jordan Poyer's in the lineup that helps too. We'll see if they're up to the task. The Ravens right now lead the NFL averaging 33.3 points per game and are really good in the red zone scoring 80% of the time in the red zone. For Chris Brown, I'm Maddie Glab with this week's game preview. Coach, you're headed on the road to Baltimore. They're coming off a win against New England. What are you hoping to see out of your team coming off of this game in Miami? Well, hopefully we can get a little bit healthier, get some of our players back there, and then really execute at a higher level. Uh, and just play good, fundamentally sound football, executing, taking care of the football, taking away the football, all the things that lead to winning football games in the NFL. Well, you've faced Lamar a couple of times. You've got a unicorn playing quarterback, so do they. Lamar, you've kept him in check two years ago in the playoffs. He's coming back, back-to-back 100-yard -back rushing games versus Miami and New England, two division opponents you know well and know how hard it is to run against them. What's the key to beating Lamar and the Ravens? Well, you know, we, we knew him from a couple of years ago. We're getting into it now in terms of our plan, and, and you've got to be a Simon Sound in order to stop Lamar, and then you've got to do a good job with your tackling in the, in the open field because he can break tackles and make people miss in the space. A couple of things. Young players stepped into starting roles this last week. I mean, it's all hands on deck, like we said earlier in the show. You lost a close game. What do you think of all your young players who saw what happened to the roster, how that game went, what they were, what was expected of them, and how can that help them in their mindset to prepare for the rest of the season? Yeah, it's interesting, Steve. Really, the first two games in, in our season this year were, were blowouts, right? So I think a lot of these college players that came to us in their first year now with us are like, hey, oh, this life in the NFL is, is easy. It's going to be like this every week. And the reality of it is it's not. It's like it was this past week where games are close and you've got to be at your best uh, in the final minutes of the game. All right, Coach, thanks. Good luck this week in Baltimore. We're going to be back next week to recap the game against the Ravens and preview your Week 5 matchup 
against the Pittsburgh Steelers. Thanks for you at home watching the Sean McDermott Show pre presented by Kaleida Health. We'll see you next week. And as always, go Bills. Final Thoughts is presented by Toyota. Toyota is the exclusive and official vehicle of the Buffalo Bills. Toyota, let's go places. The Sean McDermott Show is presented by Kaleida Health, the official health care provider of the Buffalo Bills. By Connors & Ferris, your workers' comp attorneys. Call 716-684-COMP today. By Toyota. Toyota is the exclusive and official vehicle of the Buffalo Bills. Toyota, let's go places. And by Independent Health, you deserve the red shirt treatment.